Evolving big brains only to go extinct from stupidity. Notes from the Edge of the Narrative Matrix. Analysis of the war in Ukraine, which does not account for the Western provocations which gave rise to it, is not analysis at all. It's propagandistic children's literature. You know, it's really too bad that anyone who thinks it might be a good idea to stop exponentially escalating this proxy war is an evil Nazi Putin propagandist, because this is getting very, very dangerous. Normal person. I think it would be good if everyone didn't die in a nuclear holocaust. Crazy person. That means you love Vladimir Putin. Normal person. No, I just think it would be a good idea to try and prevent the horrific death of literally everyone. Crazy person. How much is the Kremlin paying you to say that? Fucking lunatics. Resisting nuclear Armageddon is the least partisan position that anyone could possibly have. The least one-sided. The least campist. It's just being a normal human organism with the most normal human impulse you could possibly come up with. It's absolutely insane that anyone tries to spin it otherwise. A society where opposing nuclear Armageddon is treated as freakish and evil is the most backwards and insane society imaginable. Seriously, try to imagine anything crazier and more backwards than that. A society where everyone walks and talks backwards? Less crazy and backwards. A society where the dogs own the people? That's less crazy and backwards. This is it. This is peak crazy. A thinking species which regards as outrageous heresy any opposition to brinkmanship that can cause its extinction cannot get any more crazy. It's turned as far away from sanity as any thinking creature could possibly be. Maybe it would be wise to stop playing the let's cross Putin's red lines. I bet he's bluffing this time game. There's an antiwar.com article. Russia launches massive strikes across Ukraine targeting infrastructure. Putin warned of an even harsher response if Ukrainian terror attacks on Russian territory continue. People who aren't gravely concerned about the rapidly escalating brinkmanship between the U.S. and Russia simply have not spent enough time researching the facts and contemplating the reality of what nuclear war would mean. Their composure comes solely from psychological avoidance. It is a bit hilarious that humans rapidly evolved these massive brains only to become the first species to go extinct due to stupidity. FYI, you should always be less trusting of your government in times of war, not more. If your proxy war demands nonstop PR spin and mass media propaganda at maximum aggression to manufacture public consent for it, maybe your proxy war is immoral and bad. The only way you can believe Russia is threatening with nuclear weapons in a way the U.S. is not would be to think the U.S. has a no-first-use nuclear policy, which would, of course, be false and silly. When one side of the new Cold War wants multipolarity, where world power is much less centralized, and the other side wants unipolar planetary domination, where the entire world obeys Washington, D.C. and its puppet masters, It's not hard to figure out which side is the aggressor. Be completely dismissive of those who object to your criticisms of Western imperial aggression. The one and only reason they expect their dopey opinions to be taken seriously is because their position has been artificially normalized by copious amounts of propaganda. That's it. The one and only thing making your worldview look strange and suspicious, and the worldview of empire apologists look normal, is the fact that we've all been swimming in empire propaganda our entire lives. It's got nothing to do with the factuality or validity of anyone's position. In reality, focusing one's criticisms on the most dangerous impulses of the most powerful and destructive power structure on earth is the normal thing to do. It's not strange and suspicious when you do it. It's strange and suspicious that everyone else does not.